In 1993, hardcore started to change from its breakbeat format to the kick drum. And with DJs such as Psy, Slipmat and Seduction supporting this sound, this was the base for the new modern hardcore. In 1995, the influence of force and style saw yet another change in the hardcore scene. Using original lyrics and live vocalists instead of samples gave this style of hardcore more depth and was more appealing to a wider audience. In 2000, the scene was in decline, numbers dropping, record shops closing. The scene had become bogged down with the same tracks being played by the DJs. It was becoming stale. We need a new direction. In the summer 2001, a collaboration between DJs, Boys and Stars produced a track called Future Set, along with Scott Brown, who owns Evolution. Tunes like Elysium and Turn Up Your Music were soon to show the race scene the way forward. This was our new direction. More promoters are now featuring hardcore at their events. This in turn will provide breaking ground for new talent to rise and influence the scene. It's time to realise that hardcore is back in a big way. The scene is changing, moving forward, and more and more people are coming to join that movement. Raves are now coming back to our arenas. With fresh new sounds and the quality of DJs and MCs at a level that's been previously unseen, it's no surprise in the jumping arenas. And, as you can see, hardcore is making an impact in the world of media. location for DJ because it's smack centre of the country. It's two hours to Manchester, two hours to Southampton, so it's his great for a DJ. I've been in this location now for about four years. Um, it's great because my neighbours are sort of quite a long way away from me and also um, anyone who is close to our death as well because again we get I've done a tune called Paradise. Um, I always liked it from the start when we did it. Um, Matt came up with a really good line for the, the main riff. Um, we sort of thought, you know, this this could be something special, but you never know when you do make the tune if it is going to work or not. But then once I started playing it out, I was like, God, no, this is going to be something special. So we actually come back in the studio and we worked even harder on it because we knew that it, it had the potential there. Um, we got a friend in to sort of co-write the lyrics for Jenna. Um, they sort of worked out most of the verses and then we came in to work out the more of the chorus line. Um, it's, it's just one of them tunes that for some reason it just seems to have really worked well. I spent a lot of time getting the production right and we think we've got, you know, it's really crystal clear and I think that's really helped it as well, it's, it's so clear. We've got a digital desk now so we can save the mix downs because I think the most important thing about a, part, uh, about a track is the mix down. You can have the best track in the world but if the mix down isn't right you've, uh, you've blown it. So. Um, We've got the little K-Rock monitors that um, seem to sort uh, most of our problems out. When we used to have a pair of uh, Tannoy monitors before there, um, and they didn't really do the job. So we bought the K-Rocks and uh, everything's great now. So K-Rocks, digital desk, um, we use PC sequencing. Uh, this is um, a really, really professional bit of kit. This is what we put all the vocals through that we do with Jenna. Um, it's called Focus Right Red 7. If you went to like a, a million pound studio, it's all the real top end studio, then this is what they'd have to do vocals. So, um, you know, real, this end is like some real top end stuff, what we think really gives the tracks a little bit sparkle at the edge. Right, this is Jenna, this is Essential uh, Platinum's number one singer. Um, we've just recently uh, done a track called Fires in the Sky that we've um, signed to Raymond Baby. Um, seems to be getting a really good response at the moment. Um, we made that a few months ago now. We've um, gone back to the studio a few times. We're just trying to get the mix down right, get the uh, vocal sounding right. Um, but we've, we've done it now and it uh, seems like it could be an anthem, so uh, fingers crossed. It's actually good now because I do get to do a bit more writing. I mean, I've always written songs, but, but we kind of collaborate together ideas, so it's... Yeah, we normally write the vocals when we're like, on a, we've got a two hour journey somewhere, we just sit there 
and maybe we'll be listening to a few other tunes and we'll just bounce ideas off each other. Yeah. Like Jenna's very good at putting the words together and making them all rhyme and everything and I might come up with the idea and the sort of words we'll use and then she'll start throwing it together and yeah, we just bounce back and forth off each other. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, yeah. yeah. <laughs> We've got an idea. That came from, um, we were driving to, I don't know, Paul was playing somewhere, I don't remember where, and um, the sun was setting and it was amazing, wasn't it? It was like... Yeah, it's amazing, the sunset. Sunset. And I thought someone was just saying, oh, it's like this fire in the sky. Yeah. Well, that could be a line for yeah. a track or something. Yeah, so <laughs> that's it. So that's it. It's a little bit different with Paradox, we have actually brought someone else in to, yeah, to that's go and write um, the vocal and he's, he's been writing lyrics for years and years. So what happens is it's like me and Matt will go in and we'll lay down like the basses of the tune and then Stuart Russell came in, he was, um, you know, he's, he's about 45 now, so he came in and then Jenna and sort of Stuart got together and then they just sort of worked out the melody together. Um, Stuart actually did write most of the lyrics on that but then we all sort of, uh, sort of collaborated to get the, uh, the melody right and then we all sort of come up with a chorus as well, anyway, that's like a joint thing. Yeah. But, um, sort of, it was just a bit of a different angle really, that tune, so we brought someone in who we don't normally do stuff with, just to see if we could get a slightly different sound, and it, it has seemed to work yeah. really well. Someone will do something slightly different that will work, and then everyone will sort of go that way for a little while. Then the problem is, is all of a sudden that starts to become stout, and then someone else will try something a little bit different, and it will take a while before something that different actually does work. Because at first it, it just won't; it will just sound too different. Then all of a sudden someone will get something; they'll hit the nail on the head, and then it will just all shift that way. So it's just like shifts of styles, really. It's just a fashion. It's like you know, one minute people are wearing turn ups, one minute trousers down, one minute they're wearing flares. You know, it's just just a fashion. One thing is at the moment, we've definitely got something at the moment that the people love, so what the worst thing we could do now is try and change it too quickly, because um, if that happens, all of a sudden people go, oh, you know, what's happened to the music, we really love and that, you know, you've changed it, or I don't like this new style, so it has to be a very slow progression, um, something you won't even really notice. All we're trying to do is use a slightly darker sound in the beginning of the track, um, and then a more uplifting sort of break, and then go darker again, just so it sort of swaps it about, so it's not, so the blight, sort of the guys, like the dark side and the girls are like the, the more uplifting side, that's, that's the plan. I actually started making music when I was 15. The first track I ever did, um, it went to number 17 in the National Dance Channel, it was called Life's Like a Dance. And you wouldn't believe it, a guy called Paul Elstein sampled my vocal that I wrote on someone to do, and he went to a top three in the National Comedy Channel. Um, that's any comedy music game, it's an absolute nightmare trying to get money. used to go to a place called Castaways that then changed its name to Milwaukee's. Um, it used to start at half past ten, used to finish at two in the morning and it was just a, a strobe and a fog machine and sound system and one DJ and that was it. It was like the acid house days, it was absolutely unbelievable. Um, then it progressed into just getting a few more DJs in and the lights started getting a little bit more glitzy and they, the lasers came in. Um, the music sort of got more and more uplifting um, but then unfortunately all of a sudden music from this great uplifting vibe everyone sort of thought oh it's too this, it's too that, you know a bit commercial or whatever but then it went really dark, the problem is it went so dark and nobody was having a good time anymore 
so that's when I thought, I've got to do something here. The music, like everything I love about the music has gone. So I started like trying to find any records I could find with a bit of piano and just something uplifting, just to try and get people's hands back in the air. And that's what it was always about to me. Um, in about 92, Slipknot was, or maybe 93, 94, Slipknot made um, the SMD series. Um, that was one of the first things where I thought, this is this is it, this is where I want to be. So straight away I was like on that tip. It's like four to the floor again, um, uplifting, pianos, vocals. And um, just from there really, um, that's where Happy Hardcore started. But Hardcore Open to me is uh, most probably the most important event that's going to happen this year. Um, because it's going to be the first Hardcore event to have happened over the last three years, um, if this doesn't go well, then it's like Hardcore isn't back yet. Um, but we've had a ticket count, um, and from what I can make out, it's going to sell out. Alright, we're uh, in Walton on the Maze, Clacton. Um, we're down in the studio today, getting some bits ready for Arca um, getting some remixes finished and done so we can get them played out. My name's Darren Styles, 27 years old, uh, born in London, moved to Clacton on the Sea when I was seven. Got into music probably when I was about six or seven, bought my first uh, seven inch record. Yeah, this is Styles' studio. Um, my studio is in Ipswich, but uh, we do a lot of the vocal production and that sort of stuff here because there's more space. <laughs> do use a lot of vocals in, in the majority of all of our tracks, um, whether it be hardcore or trance stuff. Yeah. We've both had studios for quite a while. I mean, I've had mine for five or six years. Darren's had his with the, t the duo team of Force and Styles for a good eight years as well. Um, and since Darren's bought his own place, he's moved all the stuff into it and built his own system, which is pretty much exactly the same in every detail software, hardware wise as mine. I've been living here for about three months, um, just set my studio up in the last sort of three weeks, um, run exactly the same studio as uh, Breeze because obviously we work together closely so either I work in his studio or he comes and works in my studio and then it's the same so we can you know, work together easily. <laughs> At the moment we've, we're on a more of a, a trancey, happier sort of vibe. At the moment we're still doing that, um, but we're trying to explore some other styles as well, which is a little bit more harder, a little bit more hard dance orientated, um, especially with the, the percussion side of things. We're trying to make it a bit tougher. Um, although we are keeping sticking to our roots, 
but just in moving with the, with the music, we don't want to get stuck in a, a rut of one year or one style. We'd rather just move with it as it moves. When we, when we work on a track, it's, um, I normally sort of deal with the uh, engineering side of things and Darren deals with the music, Darren's got a great ear for music uh, and playing cool. So Darren normally comes up with a, a good basis riff. Um, and then we'll work the, the drums and bass around that. Then we'll sort of go from there into the final production and arrangement. And we, we both try to arrange the track in, in the way we like tracks to go, where it's hard hitting and happening quick. Um, and, and that's how we work, really. Darren, Darren's great at the music, and I'm, I'm good at the engineering. And then we come together for the mix downs and final production. I like uplifting hard dance music. Um, I've always been one for, it has to be, as long as it's pumping, but something that's uplifting makes you, you know, rush and buzz and put your hands in the air. That's where I'm coming from. This day you wash up, yeah. The reason it doesn't wash up is it's expensive. Well, obviously I've known Breezy for, for years now, 80 or 90 years, since back in the day when we first sort of started. Um, it was about, I think, two years ago now, two years in the summer, and um, we both played at Heart of Heaven at Lakota. And um, we both uh, went in the same car down there, and we just ended up talking about hardcore and the way things were going at the time. And I just said to him, I really want to make a hardcore track that's still hardcore, but not trancecore, but it's got the trancey feel and it's banging and uplifting. And I said, well, let's get in the studio and have a go. And so we did. And that track was called Future Set, which was a tune we did about a year and a half ago now, which was a point where we both got, well, we'd all, everyone got a bit lost with the music. And we decided to take a trance style riff and add it into a hardcore track. Um, so give it a bit of fatness and give it that different type of mix that we wouldn't, wouldn't normally give a hardcore track. Then we did probably about nine, ten months down the line, we did a track called Your Shining, which was a vocal track we did. Both of these have been really big tracks. So the next step was to try and put the two together to see what we could come up with and just give it a bit of flavour. And for Hark or Heaven, um, we wanted to merge the two tracks um, because we felt they were both um, our biggest tracks and they work well together. So we basically put the Your Shining vocals over Future Set and called the track Future Shining. So yeah, you often hear a uh, trance record with another a cappella over the top and then it goes massive. So we just thought, well, why not just take our biggest a cappella over one of our biggest tracks and then try and make a, another big anthem now. And we just wanted to do that, one for the album and two for the night. So we had, me and Breezy had a track that no one else was going to play that night, so everybody split it for us. really you know an amalgamation of different styles because we don't just listen to hardcore we listen to trance and hard house and hard, a lot of hard dance as well so then all them styles are sort of thrown in the pot and, and we come up with things like that <laughs> it's like it's like all music so Musical styles, it will just carry on evolving hopefully as one chain, one sound changes, one new piece of equipment comes out, it evolves into something else. Uh, some, sometimes it might lose its way for a little bit, but it always remains underground and then evolves into a new sound. Um, so I don't see it disappearing, it only disappears if you lose art, lose interest, and you just don't want to do it anymore. But uh, the way things are for us, we wouldn't, we wouldn't move on from it, I don't think. When I started out in, in, in hardcore, it was, it was, yeah, I loved it, it was brilliant, um, but it didn't quite have the production of what was going on in other music styles. It's always been uh, made by people who haven't really had any training in that particular sort of music field, so it never had that right production sound to it, and as we've all learned over time, it's, it's, it's come to what it is today, which is a highly produced music alongside drum and bass trance and 
some of the other styles of music. Was 
been it's the friendliest scene in the world. It doesn't matter who you are, where you come from, you know, everyone's accepted, and that's the best thing about it. And, you know, bits of house do, hard house do, and end up getting killed by these things in a minute. But, um, no, there's, there's no atmosphere like it ever, anyway. It was brilliant. It was uh, it was really uplifting. Um, the crowd were absolutely going mental. It was a peak time to play, 12 till 1. So yeah, reflecting back, it was great. It was really brilliant. Yeah. I went with the crowd really. It started off slightly hard. I tried to go hard to soft, hard to soft, just to please uh, you know the majority of people and the, and the dance floor. The way it was going at that particular time, it was, uh, it was a, it needed a bit hard on a bit of soft. Yeah, so it's good. No, the sound system was great. Uh, it looked like they had I put extra sound in there tonight. It, it really did kick, so it was, it was good. It was good for the punters. They, they seem to notice it when there's a lot more sound in there. It was a good production. It makes them dance a, a lot better. And uh, yeah, they enjoyed it. I deliberately left uh, Your Shine until about five records, six records in, um, and yeah, it, went, it did go down. It was the first air in, so it was a bit nervous to see how it would go down, but it, it, they went mental, they responded it, to it really well, so it's great. Wicked feeling to, to see them throw their hands up in the air and, and go mad to it, yeah, brilliant. Yeah, I noticed the, the production was, was really good. It was above standard for, for hardcore and it was a it was a bit of a comeback for them to to show what they could do, and, uh, and they have you know really put the icing on the cake. It was, it was a good good production, good night, and I think the majority of people enjoyed themselves. So it's all good. And the